6.6, numbers 1, 2, and 3. In section 6.6, .6, we're going to solve quadratic equations. So that's going to be equations with an x squared in it, which we haven't done before. But before we start doing them from scratch, let's get comfortable with one of the properties we're going to use um, in the process of solving a quadratic equation, and that's the zero factor property. It says that for any real number a and b, if a times b equals zero, then it must be true that either a is zero, b is zero, or they both are zero. And if we just look at some number examples of that, let's say we have 5 times 3. Well, that equals 15. If one of those was a 0, let's say we had 0 times 3, then the product is 0. If the other one was 0, the product is still 0. If both of them is 0, the product is 0. So anytime you have a product of two numbers giving you a 0, one of the numbers or both of them are going to be 0. So let's go to number 1. Here we have two different factors. They're binomial factors. We have something times something equals zero. So by the zero factor theorem, ZFT, either R plus seven equals zero, or R minus nine equals zero, or both. And then we just solve the equation for the R value that makes it true. For the first one, let's take away seven on both sides, so we get r equals minus 7. And for this one, we add 9 to both sides. And we get r equals 9. So our two solutions would be minus 7 and 9. And when you're listing your answers in my math lab, I believe you need to put a comma between the two answers. And let's look at number 2. Same idea. Two different binomial factors equaling 0. So we're going to say zero factor theorem, 13r plus 7 equals 0, or 6r minus 18 equals 0. And then we go ahead and solve for r. So take away 7 on both sides. And this is the exact same process as solving, oops, there we go, solving linear equations. All right, exact same steps, addition property, Take away 7 on both sides. That gives us 13r equals minus 7. Multiplication property, divide by 13. 13s are gone, and we get r equals minus 7 over 13 for the first one. Same idea for the second one. We go ahead and solve it. Add 18 on both sides. 6r equals 18. Divide by 6. r equals 3. So we would show our final answer. R is minus 713 or 3. And if you plug either of the solutions back into the factors, you will see that they multiply out to give a 0 because it makes one of the factors go to 0. And let's try one more, number 3. Here we still have two factors equaling 0. So we're going to be able to use the zero factor theorem. The only difference is that one of the factors is a monomial and the other one's a binomial. But that doesn't change what we're going to apply at all. So we take the first factor, 4t, set it equal to zero. And then we solve for t. And then we do the second factor, 9t plus 5, set it equal to zero. So let's solve the first one, dividing by 4. Well, that doesn't change anything. It just gives us t is 0. And the next one, if we take away 5, we get 9t equals minus 5. Divide by 9. t equals minus 5 over 9. So we show our final answer is t is 0 or minus 5 over 9.